Folks, welcome to our Moody's Analytics Ag Chat Series. My name is Doug Johnson, Ag Strategist for Moody's Analytics, and with me is Nate Franzine, President of the Ag Banking Division of First Dakota National Bank in Yankton, South Dakota. Nate, I really appreciate your time today, and I wanted to do this series as a follow-up to a ag webinar I just did that had over 900 lenders and producers register for. The theme of that webinar was the ag commodity markets and five tips to improve profitability. So today, let's drill down into the art of improving marketing skills for your farm and the journey that takes. Nate, let's break down some of the key points that both lenders and producers can think about to help take advantage of the commodity markets and some tips you definitely need to avoid. So Nate, the vast majority of producers don't create and they don't utilize a formalized marketing plan. They don't do break-even analysis to manage the farm. The concern with that is if you don't know your actual cost of production per acre, how do you know your break-evens? And if you don't know your break-evens, how do you know when to sell? So Nate, help us understand how to build a marketing plan and keep in mind, everyone starts at a different place on the yardstick. Some have nothing and some have tools they already use. Yeah, great, great point, uh, Doug. And uh, I think, you know, we're starting this conversation at the right point. And it is what, what is your cost of production? What are your break evens, right? And as you state, I think there's a wide variation across the industry of how folks track this, how well they track it, uh, how much they're in tune to it. We certainly have lots of producers out there who uh, track this very well and have systems in place to monitor it. Um, we have others that, that uh, you know, have lots of room for opportunity to improve their uh, ongoing tracking of cost of production and break evens throughout the, throughout the year and throughout the production cycle. And I, to me, I think that's the key. <clears throat> um, my experience is most producers track this to some level um, and they use varying methods from spreadsheets to notebooks, paper to uh, more sophisticated softwares. But um, one of the common things I see out there is um, they, they calculate it a few times a year, you know, at the beginning of the season, maybe once mid season and maybe once at the end. And, and a lot of them just calculate it once or twice a year and that's it. And one of the keys to success in marketing, in my opinion, is it's a fluid plan. It's, it's evolving throughout the entire growing season. And so you have to have a system in place where you can be monitoring your cost of production and break even calculations throughout the season because things change, right? We may have to apply another application of spray. We may, uh, you know, costs may have changed. Something may have happened. Um, we're monitoring what we think yield could be and, and will be. And that obviously changes as the crop matures and we get closer and closer to harvest. All of those things help us make better marketing decisions. And so I think that's that's really critical. It can't be just a once or twice a year check. It's gotta be uh, ongoing, uh, real time, as, as real time as possible as you know, factors are changing for you out, out on your farm. Nate, that's a great, you made really good points here. <clears throat> One of them is don't build it and put it away. If, I think you've gotta ask the, everybody has to ask the question, who are you building a marketing plan for? Is it for the farm or is it for the lender? And if it's for the lender, chances are you build it, you put it away until renewals come up and then you rebuild it, right? And that's something we want to avoid. The, the marketing plan should be a tool to help guide better decisions. You've heard the old adage, Nate, don't use your grain bin as a checkbook. And, and what does that mean? So when the bills come due, I go sell a load of corn and I pay the bills has nothing to do with where the price of commodities are at. What I think the future of agriculture, the long-term sustainability and success is gonna be measured on the profitability, not yeah. just being able to pay the bills. Nate, I have a question for you here too. Based on what you just said, what percent, in your opinion, of producers use outside consultants to help build marketing plans? Do you have a handle on that? 
Yeah, I think that's a wide, wide range. Um, uh, I, I think a lot of folks will lean on marketing expertise to help them in their decision process. I think, um, you know, how they define a marketing plan and how formal they make that plan really, really varies across the industry. And um, some, some producers plan is in their head. Uh, some is, uh, you know, sketched out in a rough, rough sketch and, and others is very detailed and has trigger points and timelines and quantities and market prices that it's, uh, it's monitoring and gonna, gonna trigger action. Yeah, I agreed. Do you do you have any sense of generational marketing skills? How would you characterize some of the more seasoned producers versus some of the younger producers that are stepping into the operation? Yeah, I think it I think it really varies. A couple of comments I'd make around that. Uh, number one. Um, you know, all generation, I, I see very good marketers from every generation. Um, so so it's, it, it isn't necessarily generational, but, but probably some trends I see is the younger generation can be a tremendous asset because they tend to be a little bit more technologically savvy. They tend to be more used to using spreadsheets, software, apps, uh, what, what have you. And so they can analyze and, and uh, assess data quickly with the tools they've learned how to use. And that can be a, a tremendous tool to leverage as uh, your farms, uh, you know, working your process to make the best marketing decisions possible. Nate, uh, Nate, perfect segue. Everybody's management skills are different. Some grew up with spreadsheets, others with a pencil. What are some resources available to help producers learn how to develop a better marketing plan for their operation? Yeah, so you know, we started with the break-even analysis, and I think every state out there has farm and ranch management programs and has some of those kinds of tools and resources available. Some of our best operators use use farm and you know the extension service or the farm and ranch management program to help them just double check numbers. So I want to put a plug in there. Um, I would also say you know there's several resources out there, whether it's brokers, um, whether it's, uh, you know, cash marketers, uh, or whether it's educators. Um, you know, I, I think of Ed Usset at the University of Minnesota has a tremendous winning the game program that gives producers a great base of fundamentals on how to develop a plan that holds you a little more discipline and has you setting triggers both on time of year and volume and price of the market and kind of forces you to think about taking action. So I think wonderful tool uh, out there. And I know there's others uh, to, to various to, to number, but uh, you know, there's plenty of tools out there, I think, for help. Um, right. Even, even go as far as just asking the lender. One of my favorite questions that I love to hear asked is producer walks in the or in uh, talks to their lender what are other producers seeing that are some of the best practices out there? Nate, you look at all of your lenders and the depth of producers that they work with and think about the story that they could even share with producers. Here's some trends we're seeing that are really working well. So I think yeah. the, the theme is ask and there's a lot of resources. Nate, think back to the super cycle of 2011, 29, 2012, when corn hit six bucks and so many producers missed the peak and they regretted it ever since, right? There's a saying out there that if I could get a redo on the commodity super cycle, I'd do it different this time. So here we are, we're seeing a rally in a lot of the commodities what is your top advice on this possible redo of commodity prices? Yeah, I, so the super cycles and, you know, ag, ag is cyclical and it always has been, it always will be, right? Um, the volatility may increase, the, the spikes may be higher, the valleys may be deeper, you know, that, that can happen in a market. But um, my belief around that is uh, we shouldn't be approaching marketing trying to get, have a redo, right? We, we should be approaching marketing with a disciplined strategy. And in my mind, 
that discipline strategy is number one, based on we know our cost of production, we know our break even, so we're gonna sell when we have a chance for profit. And then, you know, there's certainly, there's some strategy there that if we know the market's rallying, we're going to sell into it, ladder into it, whatever your strategy might be. But the best advice I have, and I tell our lenders this all the time, and we talk about it with our customers, the best marketers I see are forward looking, not backwards looking. And what, what I mean by that is, in your super cycle example, here's a perfect example of it. You know, we can always look backwards and say, man, we left money on the table, the market rallied. Shoot, we missed out on some, some additional revenue. Well, you know what? Nobody knows that. Nobody knows when the market's going to rally. Nobody can predict that. And if they say they can, they're kidding you, right? Uh, run the other way. If they knew that, they'd be, they'd own an island somewhere. So what marketing is all about is having the best information at a point in time, making a decision at that point in time, and then not looking back, look forward from there. Now look to the next marketing decision. And um, the folks that struggle with marketing the most, in my opinion, they continually are beating themselves up about prior marketing decisions. Oh, spot on, Nate. <clears throat> what happened happened and you have to continue to move forward. Throw the rear view mirror away and, yeah. and drive forward, not drive backwards. Nate, in one minute or less, what is your single most important piece of advice for any producer and lender listening? Well, I think it's what I just said about looking forward and not backward. And I'm going to, I want to end with the thought around the lenders. And I have to remind myself and our, our ag banking team here this all the time. We can, uh, you know, the super cycle was a good example. We might be looking at an operator and go, man, they should have made more money than that based on what the market did. And then we look back and go, well, but you know what? They followed a disciplined marketing plan and they sold into it and they made money. And so they, they did what they were supposed to do. We, we, can't, criti we can't be critical of our clients um, when they miss out on a rally. Uh, we, have to, we have to encourage a disciplined ap approach. And if they're, they're doing that disciplined approach, we have to be, uh, be uh, right there alongside them and commending them and uh, knowing that if they maintain that disciplined approach, they'll catch more of the next rally. That is so well articulated. Uh, I want to thank you for your time today and for sharing your insights. I really appreciate the disciplined strategy concept and the looking forward, not driving backward approach. To all of our listeners, I can't emphasize enough the value each one of you brings to our ag industry. And we all need to take steps to ensure success and sustainability for our future. My roots, personally, they run very deep in agriculture with our fourth generation family farm and building for the next generation is why we do what we do. I wanna thank everyone for tuning in and for your support of helping to keep farmers farming and ag lenders lending. This is Doug Johnson from Moody's Analytics and be sure to join our next Moody's Analytics Ag Chat Series. Thank you very much.